Hey folks, it's uh, time for another Unity tutorial, and uh, this one's going to be about handling assets in Unity and creating uh, game objects. So uh, here's your Unity stage. Um, you can see here by the uh, layout that I'm actually using the um, <clears throat> I'm actually using the uh, uh, standard free version of Unity here. Uh, I also have my uh, you know my my other version here, my uh, iPhone version, but I'll just use this one for this tutorial. Oops. So, um, because I have some, some, I don't want to accidentally corrupt one of my game scenes. So, uh, again, if you saw my other tutorial, when you drag um, any kind of media that Unity understands into the assets folder of your project, it's automatically in here in your project folder. You can just drag any of these models or whatever that you have in here, and um, it will be applied in, into the stage. For example, let's create a, a game character. Okay, so we have a samurai here. And he's looking kind of tiny, so I'll just have to scale him up until we can see him pretty well. Okay, I'll move him, rotate him towards the camera. Let me go to my side view so it's easier to see where he's at in relation to the camera. Orthogonal view, remember? All right, I'll put him down there. And um, you know, it would be easy if I could. Um, you know, let me delete that light so I can show you how to create a light. It would be easier to, to have kind of like a an area for him to stand on. So um, I'm going to create the, a floor for him to stand on as well. Uh, but the first things first, if we were to play this, you'll see that um, he's not looking too good because there's no lights in the scene. So let's create a light. Let's go to Game Object, Create Other uh, Light. I'll create a directional light so that way I don't have to worry about how far it is. I just need to point in the right direction. And again, if you've used any kind of 3D uh, software, you should be familiar with point light, spotlight, directional light. Um, if you need, I could show you something about those later, but they're pretty self-explanatory. Color, intensity, range, uh, angle. Uh, you can add a texture for a cookie if you want to cast shadows. Okay, now let's create a floor for this guy to stand on. Let's go create a game object, create other, and we'll create a... You can create some primitive objects here as well. You can create a cube, a sphere, capsule, cylinder, plane. Uh, I'm going to create a cube. And I'm going to scale this baby up until we can start seeing it here pretty well. Okay. Now I'll just scale down the different axes so that it's more like something that he can stand on. Let's bring it down there. Bring that over there. I'll switch to my side view so we can see where it is. Okay. So it's not kind of going through his feet there. Okay, so we got something here that's more like an actual scene. Okay, so if we play that, we can see that uh, he's actually on an actual plane there. So um, let's go ahead and make the samurai look a little bit more interesting. He's kind of blah right now. He's kind of just plain white. So um, in my materials, I, I created a folder called Materials Myself, and I dumped all of my image maps in here. And uh, because this samurai character has uh, is UV mapped, you'll need to be UV mapped in order to see the textures correctly. Um, I've got a image here. All right, it's called Samurai Finals UV, and I'll select my samurai, and then I'll just drag this onto him, and you'll see the plus happen. And there you go. He's textured and ready to go. He's looking a lot better than he did before. Okay. And so um, that's how easy it is to start getting. Uh, a game object up and running. You'll see here when I select the samurai that uh, all the animations that were created for this character are available to me here. You'll see the listing of all the different animations. If I want to change the animation that he does by default, I can click on this animation file and you'll see that it actually showed me here when I selected it, it showed me in the project view where that is, which object has the animation where it is and stuff. So. Anyway, if I click this drop-down list, I want to change this animation. You'll see that it actually shows the animations for everything. So, for example, I could select one of the animations from an entirely different character. It wouldn't make much sense because, you know, he doesn't he's not a doesn't have wings or anything. But I'll just go and do a jumping attack here. So now when I play it, he's going to do a jumping attack. Okay. And unfortunately, in this version here, um, I don't see in my... Um, iPhone version, for example, there's a way to set what you call the wrap mode, which will make the animation, uh, you can set it to uh, 
only happen once or loop or ping pong or clamp forever means it plays once and then uh, the object will stay on the last keyframe. So you can see this happen here where these dragons are kind of um, looping through their flight uh, animation cycle. But uh, in the Unity uh, standard version, it looks like you have to just do that in uh, using your uh, scripting language, okay? And you can do that pretty easily. I'll show you how to do that in, in a soon in a tutorial coming up. All right, so that's how to do some of the basics of um, handling your objects. Let me show you how to do one more, uh, create one more kind of object that you're going to use a lot, and that is a particle system. All right, the nice thing about the particle systems here is that you can uh, see the particle system in real time as it's being created. So I'm going to give it a minimum size of 5 and a maximum size of 10, for example. It's still kind of a bit small. I'll go 50 to 100. Okay, so now you're starting to see something happen here. And you're seeing these particles. So um, minimum energy, I'll give it 6, and I'll give it a maximum energy of 20, let's say. And when, once you start getting like random velocities on these, You'll see it start to kind of happen here. Okay, now we're starting to see things happen. Okay. I'll give it a different mission here. Whoa, it's going all over the place now. But um, as you um, manipulate it, you'll be able to see it in real time. And as the, the particles are created, and as they go through their life cycle, you can specify up to four different colors here. So we can start with like a dark blue like a kind of a teal like a red and then a green and then a yellow so these are really psychedelic uh, particles here some sort some type of psychedelic uh, um, fireworks show or whatnot and uh, again you got your random force you can add some of that All right, so you've got things happening randomly. Uh, size grow, if you want the um, particles to grow in size as they age. Okay. All right, so now you can you can easily uh, start playing with this and start uh, you know deciding what you need uh, to do with this. Um, so I hope that this uh, little quick preview helps you out with at least getting uh, started on creating objects. And, of course, you can delete things just by holding down on the Mac command and delete. Okay? And command Z or Z to undelete or undo the last command. Okay, I hope this helps out.